It's time for another update on the OnPoint Dyno 350Z with that world's most powerful VQ under the hood. Sasha just finished smashing a whole bunch of track records, so it's finally time for him to show us this hybrid system that we've all been waiting for. This, of course, is Sasha Anis from OnPoint Dyno, who's not only the mad scientist behind this car's build, but also the driver. I would, I would rate him as an above, drive, above average driver. I think that's fair to say. And you've had an above average summer of fun with this car, haven't you? You've put a bunch of miles on it since you guys saw it last on our channel where we did a 111.2 at TMP. Yep. Yeah, we did a 111.2 then, and then we went on to a number of different events throughout the season. So you went to Grid Life Midwest, was it? Yep. And Grid you Life went Midwest. rather rapidly there? Yeah, that, that event was probably our worst of the whole season, but uh, we were first in rear wheel drive there. Uh, before that event, we set a new record at CSCS at the Most Sport Driver Development Track. Oh, right, I forgot about DDT, yeah. Yeah, and then uh, we kind of, through the midsummer, we usually just have a lull and just work, focus on our work. Yeah. And then now the fall came, we went and did a, another lap record. So we went two seconds faster than that first test. At TMP. At TMP. You went a 109. 109. So that was a goal for a long time to go sub 110. That's insanely fast. And that kind of leads us to Most Sport, the big track where your goal has always been to go GT3 speeds at that circuit. Yeah, like, like I think we talked ago, about it before. Kind of it was that, like that GT2 goal. back in the day was like 118s at Most Sport. And uh, you know, when I first started racing 10 years ago or so, I was like, that's my dream. If I can mm -hmm. build a car that doesn't break the rules, you know, it doesn't have crazy aero, it doesn't have a huge turbo making a thousand horsepower, it looks like a real, you know, GT race car, yeah. and do a 118, then, you know, that, as a driver and as a builder of a car, like that kind of was my goal. It's a my serious dream. accomplishment, and it's one you actually achieved, and you almost went 117. You did a low one, was it 118.1? 118.1, yeah. That is stunningly fast. As a matter of fact, let's cut some footage of that lap right now. see the whole lap you can jump onto Sasha's channel you're on YouTube as just Sasha Anis yeah yeah exactly so Sasha last name spelled A-N-I-S give him a search uh, yeah link up in the uh, top right corner there and you'll not only see that most part lap which is absolutely epic the cornering speeds are just through the roof <laughs> you're, you're... I gotta say it was the best feeling I've ever had driving a car it was it was like you're in a video game but even in a video game on fast forward I, I I could almost not see straight, but. I, I've only done like 130s at that track and I find that <laughs> terrifying. So a 118 to me is unfathomable. Really cool. There's also laps from your other events on your channel as well from, from yeah, CSCS. CSCS, and from Grid, Grid Life, Life. Life. And all that yep. stuff. yeah, so check it out. You'll find lots of good stuff on his channel. So now that you've achieved these goals, it's time to tackle the hybrid system. This is some high tech show and tell everybody and I'm a little intimidated because I don't recognize anything here. Well, I know what a heat exchanger looks like and I know what a battery looks like. Why don't we start with the battery? Where are these from? These are a BMW i8. BMW i8, wow, yep. okay, that's some, and what capacity are they? Uh, they're about seven, eight, seven or eight kilowatt hours. I can't remember exactly now. We did, I did a lot of looking for a battery that would be lightweight and be able to you know, support around 200 horsepower. Okay. And, um, yeah, was it was the, just, there's just not many. And this yeah. one seems like it'll be, it'll be good. We haven't tested it yet. I think the BMW runs around 110 kilowatts of power. Okay. We're asking for 150. So I don't think that's too aggressive. And how many of these will go in the car? Uh, there's six little guys like that. Six little guys. You haven't figured out where they're going to go yet? We obviously. figured it out. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. We've actually taken our fuel cell. We've cut it in half and had okay. a new bladder made for it. Okay. And so that's already in the car. Oh. So the whole uh, one side where the fuel cell used to be will be where those batteries will be now. I just assumed he hadn't figured it out, everybody. What was I thinking? This is, I think, the coolest looking part here, maybe because there's carbon fiber on it, and I'm a sucker for carbon fiber, but this is the motor that is gonna be 
sort of the centerpiece of this thing, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. So this motor is uh, built by Phi Power, and uh, they've kind of been instrumental in this whole project with us. They've custom designed this motor specifically for our application. Okay. Um, so it's basically going to go where the clutch and flywheel would go, right in the bell housing there. Yeah. And so the output of the engine is going to connect to the motor, and the transmission is going to connect to the motor. And it's basically going to be like an engine and then another 200 horsepower behind it. It still blows my mind that this <coughs> makes the clutch and flywheel go away. Uh, it's kind of astounding. You were saying these are the same, this is the same company that makes motors for Formula E and some other high yep. end. Yeah, I mean, the, these guys are the real deal um, when it comes to motorsports uh, motors. That, you know, with the, with the Lotus, we kind of repurposed the Tesla motor, mm -hmm. but you know, that's very heavy. And for racing, it really, with a hybrid system, especially like the weight of the system is really critical. Mm -hmm. And so this motor, I mean, the power density of this motor, you can pick it up with one hand almost. Yeah. And it's 200 horsepower. Do you know offhand how much it weighs? Uh, it says on it, I think it's 19.8 uh, yeah, kilos. Wow, that is impressively light. Yeah. And the heat exchanger is for the motor, not the battery pack, as I originally assumed. Correct, yeah. So basically what happens is the, uh, the water will circulate through the inverter and the motor. Okay. And then this will be mounted in the back of the car. Okay. Uh, where we had the diff cooler before. Mm -hmm. So we'll get some airflow going through there. And you know, these things are very efficient, so you don't need a ton of cooling. And this is the inverter? Yeah, so this is an inverter by uh, Cascadia Motion, which is, used to be Reinhardt. Okay. So they do inverters for like, you know, these electric hypercars you see with 1,000 horsepower. Mm -hmm. They do inverters for Formula One. So again, this is like real motorsport stuff. Um, and you were explaining to us that this converts AC to DC, but it does a lot more than that, doesn't it? Yeah, backwards. So it takes DC in from the battery. I always get that backwards. <laughs> and then the motor is an AC motor, and so it outputs AC uh, voltage. And the way that it does that is it's perfectly in sync with the position of the motor. So you can kind of think of this kind of like a, using a crank angle sensor and cam sensors from an engine okay. and when to fire the spark plugs. It's kind of like that, except okay. you're, you're creating the electrical signals that are required, and those waveforms have to be kind of 90 degrees from the center of the motor, so it's always pulling. And this last piece here, I have no idea what it is. What, it, what does that do? Yeah, so this is basically the alternator, if oh, you will. It okay. takes it takes uh, voltage from the the 400 volt system, yeah. and it brings it down to, to 13 volts to power the rest of the system. Oh, okay. So we'll ditch the alternator, and this is called a DC-DC converter. Okay. And it just, that's what it does. It takes DC high voltage, and it brings it down. And this sort of like wave structure is a heat sink? Yeah, so we might actually kind of take this apart and try and get some weight out of it because it's fairly heavy. Oh, by the way, this huge crate here has something in it too, don't we? Yeah, what's in this crate? What is in this crate? I think it might be time to crack it open. All right. All right, last couple screws here, DP. Yeah, man. There we go. What is in the box? Merry Christmas. Woo! That's the extract. I know what that means. I mean, super baller level sequential gearbox. Yeah, except wow. it, it was the same price as the Quaif. Why, why? These are normally like 30, 40 grand, aren't they? I don't know why. You but bought it used from a race team or something? Yeah, RJN, uh, they've been racing 350Zs for a long time. Okay. And they had a couple of these, and uh, they're selling off their Nissan stuff. So I'm just full fanboying over this uh, gearbox because it says Nismo on it. Nismo! <laughs> that should add 50% more value. You just made money. But seriously, this is a magnesium case, and you're under the you're 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 functioning under the assumption that it's got stronger gears in here than what you got. So it's going to be able to take the power. That's kind of why you you made this move. Yeah, I mean the the Quaif's been great. You know, it's done everything it should with the with the Z, but um, we're already kind of probably close to its limit. I think it's rated a little bit optimistically. Okay. Um, and this thing came for sale, and I. Wanted to jump on it because if the Quave couldn't hold up, yeah. then this was gone. I'd be kicking myself. Yeah. I mean, as you know, X Track. If you've been in the motorsport community, you know X Track is kind of the top tier. There. God forbid I ever have to rebuild this thing. Yeah. Um, it's gonna cost more to rebuild it than I just paid to buy it. I'm sure. But probably true. Uh, the car doesn't run much, you know. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's not like you're going to endurance race it or anything like that. So. Yeah, and the torque limit that they spec, I'm sure like that torque limit is... A realistic number. Yeah, so yeah. as long as we stick to that and we don't, we don't go over that, I think we'll be okay. Mm -hmm. For you guys who aren't familiar with X-Track, like Sasha was saying, they are really a top-tier manufacturer of sequential gearboxes. They're used in you know, World Challenge cars, World Touring cars, British Touring cars, pretty much like any high-level motorsport you can think of, you'll find these in the mix. So it's, it's really good stuff. And this is a bell housing for the for this motor. So exactly. This, the sucker will bolt up, although there'll be, you were saying they might have to do a little bit of work on bell housing to fit the motor in here? Yeah, so basically what we're doing is we're making an adapter plate 
uh, which will space the transmission back. Okay. Um, and then at the same time, the input shaft has to change. So, you know, there's going to be some work that has to be done. The question is just if we have to cut out some areas here. I mean, there's already a window here, mm -hmm. so that's kind of already convenient. Yeah. Um, for the for the high voltage lines and the other things to come through. Neat. So we'll see how much work is required, but uh, hopefully it's not too bad. I'm assuming this is going to be a six speed sequential shifted. You're going to still shift it with, or do you have paddles now? Uh, right now it's a lever, a lever. but we're going to switch to a uh, paddle shift. You are going to shift to pad paddles, yeah. and is it going to be uh, hydraulically actuated or air uh, actuated? Air, air actuated. So it's going to make the cool little choo -choo noises. <laughs> That's all I care about. I want choo choo noises. Yep, you'll have choo choo noises. Sweet, I'm looking forward TP. to that. And this is sort of the last piece of the mechanical bits for today. So what's the, the next step in the whole development process on this? Yeah, so really the next step is finalizing this uh, motor mounting okay. uh, and then mounting the batteries. Mm -hmm. And then once that's done, the rest of it's pretty much just mounting the little bits and um, running the, you know, running the lines, the, the power lines and running the water lines. Okay. So in my mind, it's like not a lot of work, but I'm very, sure, very I'm sure it'll be a lot of work. <laughs> and. Uh, you know, one step at a time. Okay. Well, we're going to come back and watch some of those steps happen and capture that on this magical moving picture device that we have. Yeah, we'll have it on Dino. I'm sure you guys will. Oh yeah. Want oh, to yeah. see? That'll be a highlight of our our fall season. What is the timeline on this? Do you have one? Uh, well, we were hoping to get it out this season, mm -hmm. um, but you know, things just got delayed. You know how it goes. Sure. So we, we need to make the custom shafts for the motor. Mm -hmm. That's probably going to be the main lead time thing. Okay. But I would love to have this thing running. Uh, January or earlier. Okay. So that might be a nice uh, New Year slash present for everyone watching right now. And uh, thank you, Sasha, for showing all these goodies. I'm excited to see this thing come together. And stay tuned for more updates on the On Point 350Z with hybrid power. Still can't get my brain wrapped around it, but it's going to happen. <laughs>